Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop and I'm here today with Annie from By Annie and she is the expert on bag making. And since I have no experience in making bags, she's going to teach us today how to make bags. So what are we going to start with today? We're going to start with a simple, easy bag. We're going to do the netbook case out of my netbook computer carrier's pattern. And it has all the techniques that you need to make a more complicated bag, but we're going to start with something simple and then show you what to do that's different on a, on a bigger bag. Awesome. Let's get started. All right. I'm going to walk you through the steps that you need to make the little netbook case out of our netbook computer carriers 2.0. This is an, our newest version of this pattern and it's got some additions and some improvements from previous versions. One of the best things that we added is an interior pocket made out of mesh that you can put your cords in, your chargers, those types of things. It's zippered so things aren't getting caught and they're staying nice and secure. And we also added labels for all the pieces. That's something we started doing in our pattern several years ago, but the first version of this pattern was written long enough ago that it didn't have them. So that's one thing that I really love. All of my patterns kind of follow the same format. You start by cutting out all the pieces that you need for your project. Some of the pieces are cut big and you're going to quilt those and then cut other pieces out of them. And you cut the pieces that you need out of your coordinating fabric for your borders, your lining, your um, bindings. We're going to cut our mesh pocket and then we're going to label them all. The nice thing about the labels is you know exactly which piece it is that you're supposed to use when it calls for it in the pattern and if you've got some labels left over as you're cutting you know that you missed cutting something so it just helps make sure that you've got everything you need when you're ready to start sewing. So again you're going to follow the pattern instructions for cutting all your different pieces and included in those are a couple of large pieces of fabric that you're going to quilt with your soft and stable. I love using soft and stable in my bags and purses because it makes them stand up and hold their shape. They last a really long time. You can take a, 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 a soft fabric like a quilting fabric and turn it into a nice sturdy bag by using the soft and stable as your stabilizer. It's easy to sew through, it's easy to quilt through it, it compresses as you sew it so it doesn't add a lot of bulk in your seams and it just gives you a really professional finish when you're done. So uh, for this particular one we're going to cut our main fabric, our soft and stable, and our lining fabric and if you're a quilter this is going to be very familiar to you. You're going to take those three pieces, sandwich them, quilt them, and then cut your pieces from it. One thing that I like to show people when I talk about quilting with soft and stable is your soft and stable has a really soft nap on each side. So when you, I go to make my fabric sandwich, I will usually start by putting my lining down first and I'll lay it down on my soft and stable and smooth it out all the way to the edges and then I'll flip it over and I'll put my main fabric on the other side. I'll get that nice and smoothed out and then I'll put a few pins in. Now if you're a person who likes to spray baste you can certainly do some spray basting too. I had asthma when I was young and I have a hard time with those sprays, so I usually avoid that. If you'll notice though, your soft and stable has some really good nap to it and it really holds your fabric in place and keeps it from moving. So I don't even put a lot of pins in this when I do it. I'll put a pin maybe in each corner, maybe a pin here and here, a couple in the middle, and then I'm ready to quilt. When I quilt this, if you're new to quilting and you um, haven't done a lot of machine quilting, I would recommend just doing some straight lines. And follow the pattern in the, or the instructions in the pattern that show you which way you're going to cut pieces out. On this one, we're going to be cutting the width by the length. So I would probably do my lines going this way. And I would just use a chalk marker to mark a line from top to bottom through here and then I would stitch down that line and I'd use the guide on my foot to move me maybe an inch on either side of that and just work my way back and forth across the piece. Once I've got the piece all quilted, then I'm ready to cut out the front, the back of my bag, and I'll have another set just like that that I'll use to cut out the zipper strip, the side strip, and the back pocket. So follow your pattern for that, get your pieces cut out, and then we're ready to start preparing all the components for our bag. 
Okay, we've got our fabric quilted, and now it's time to cut out the pieces that we need. And one thing that I forgot to mention when I was talking about quilting your fabric is a trick that I can share with you of something I do. I don't have a lot of time for making bags and purses, and quilting tends to be the part that stops me up sometimes. If I know that I have to stop and quilt the fabric, it's just that extra little step before I can get started making my bags and purses. So what I often do is take a two yard piece of fabric and soft and stable to my long arm quilter and have her quilt that big piece for me. From two yards, I can get any of my big bags and a number of small pieces. So it works out really well. And you can see she can do a fun design on here with swirls and curves, things that I'm not maybe as good at for doing um, free motion quilting. But again, if you like to free motion quilt, have fun playing with some fun different designs too. So you're going to take your piece of quilted fabric and cut out the other parts for the bag. So in your labels, you're going to see some labels that say from quilted fabric. So those are the ones that you've already quilted the fabric and then you cut your pieces. So we're going to have a strip that becomes the sides and bottom of our bag, two little strips that get our zipper put inside, which will connect to this to make a loop that goes around the side. We have our front and back of our case and then we have a pocket that goes on the back. One thing that I will, a little tip I can share, this fabric doesn't have a real predominant design, but you can kind of see how these words form little circles, and I want to keep them together that way, so I will cut this as one wide strip, which I then cut in half. When I go to put my labels on and store this, I will make sure that wherever the middle is, I just fold these over and I put a wonder clip on right there because that's the side where I want to make sure I'm putting my zipper in between so that my design flows all the way across. Again, on this fabric, it's not so noticeable, but if you've got something that has a big motif on it, that just makes it look better and it looks like you planned it out. After you have all your pieces cut from your quilted fabric, one of my best tips to share with you is something that I call sealing the edges. If you look at this piece of fabric, this is a leftover piece I have. No matter how you quilt it, you're always going to get to the outside edges and have a few little areas that don't have quilting stitches going through them. And it's really frustrating if you get your whole bag sewn together and one of these has folded out and you've got exposed soft and stable sewing showing. So I just, as the very first step before I start anything, I go all the way around each piece and I just stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge to seal those edges. It's really helpful if I take my stiletto again and hold it down to hold the layers together or even like this, just to hold them in place so that they're not folding over and, and getting crooked. And again, with Soft and Stable, the more you sew it, the more it compresses. So by sewing a little extra stitch in there, I'm mashing those layers down and reducing the bulk in my seams. So we've got our pieces cut out, let's start sewing. Thank you. 